Hi everybody, it's December 30, 2017. I'll link below to everything. I hope that you circulated. It's very, very important information. An electronic silent spring facing the dangers and creating safe limits. Our FCC is still using standards from 30, 35 years ago. And look at the change that has come about in those 30, 35 years with these electromagnetic microwave frequencies that we are all now saturated in, incredibly dangerous, not only to the two-legged, but also to the four-legged, to your pets, uh, to your own health, um, to all life as you walk outdoors. Everything, trees, insects, bees, every plants, everything is affected by these frequencies that really we do not have to have at levels so high as we do here in the United States. We do not need cell towers, Gwen towers, back to back, cross the street from one another, quarter of a mile away from one another, and more and more go up every day, which means more and more life is suffering the consequences, the dangerous consequences. So what I'm about to read, and I'm not going to read even what I've everything that I've highlighted, but these are summaries of studies about the effects of these radio frequency signals on trees, insects, and birds. The trees, these uh, microwave electromagnetic frequencies affect the growth rate of plants and fungi. Think about all of the fungal disease that you are seeing on your trees, but not only on trees, stop signs and street signs and fences. The microwave electromagnetic frequencies allow fungi to grow and spread. But they also can induce plants to produce more meristems, affect root cell structure, induce stress responses, causing biochemical changes. All of our natural processes today are being so radically changed into something not natural. And unfortunately, this change has come about so quickly, so suddenly, that it is, we, we, life itself has not had time to adjust to it. Seedlings were put in a Faraday cage and they thrived. Seedlings that were exposed to these uh, electromagnetic frequencies, they showed necrotic lesions, abnormal coloring in their leaves, trees, um, a British biologist did a study, found that trees were dying, are dying, mysteriously from a variety of diseases in urban areas all over Europe. Also show abnormal photoperiodic responses, cancer-like growths under the bark. The bark splits so that the underlying tissue becomes infected. And trees in areas with high Wi-Fi activity suffer from bleeding fissures in their bark, the death of parts of leaves, abnormal growth. But listen to the staggering percent increase. In 2010, in the Netherlands, 70% of urban ash trees suffer from radiation sickness, including a lead-like shine on their leaves, which indicates the leaves are dying. I've seen that shine on leaves, have you? But only five years before, 10% of ash trees suffered radiation sickness. In five years, it jumped 60%. That's enormous. Ants, studies on ants, they found that ants, um, their uh, movement, their angular versus linear movement changed. It increased, it decreased. Um, they did studies with mobile phones, uh, computers that had Wi-Fi, and then they switched the Wi-Fi off. The ants appeared undisturbed when the Wi-Fi was off, very disturbed when it was activated. And that reminded me of this video. Now, I have um, decreased the speed, but watch these ants as they kind of swarm around this smartphone, but they're all kind of 
going in their own direction. But watch what happens when that cell phone is getting a call. And when you are receiving a call, it emits more intense frequencies. So the answer looks like they have you know, their own individual free will. They're going wherever they want, but then the phone rings and they all get in line and they start. They start just moving in line, going around that cell phone, almost like the frequency is controlling them. Huh. Think about all of the people that you know who are in lockstep with the redesigning of our world into a new world order and can't seem to think for themselves. Um, Bees. Bees are positively charged and flowers are negatively charged. These charges help pollen stick to bees' hair while they pollinate. Bees use their electrical sense to determine whether or not a flower has recently been visited by another bee and is therefore worth visiting. So bees and other insects, birds, they use the Earth's magnetic field and high-frequency electro, um, electromagnetic energy such as light. They accomplish orientation, navigation by means of free radicals, as well as a simultaneously reacting magnetite conglomerate. Technically produced electromagnetic oscillations, pulses in the um, megahertz range, and magnetic impulses in the low frequency range persistently disturb the natural orientation and navigation mechanisms. Several transmitters, cellular antennas, were erected in the immediate vicinity of hives, and what was noticed was pronounced restlessness, greater increase in, their, in the bees' urge to swarm. The bees did not build their combs in the manner prescribed by the frames, but in random fashion. They went foraging despite snow and temperatures below zero and died. And a survey of beekeepers that had a transmitter within 300 meters of their beehives found that there was a 37.5% observed increase in aggression from their bees. 25% found that their bees had a greater tendency to swarm. 65% reported that their colonies were inexplicably, inexplicably collapsing since the transmitters became operational. Yes, of course, the U.S. and Fish and Wildlife Service urged Congress to investigate the potential relationship between wireless devices and bee colony collapse. Do you think that occurred? I tried to find information on it. I'm not going to waste my time. We see these cell phone towers going up every single day all over the country. We see Gwen Towers being erected. We see all of um, the uh, gadgets coming out, dangerous frequencies being emitted, but our FCC continues to use the standards like 30, 35 years ago. That in itself should really tell people something is very wrong here. But frogs, frogs inside a Faraday cage, shielded from these frequencies, had a mortality rate of 4.2%. The unshielded frogs, their mortality, 90%. Bird collisions is another problem. 6.8 million birds die per year in collisions with communication antennas or their guy support water, uh, wires. Look at the Gwen Towers and look at all of the wires that are coming down into the ground. Well, they emit very dangerous frequencies. And our Department of Interior they know all of this. Back in 2014, they wrote a letter. And they were citing the collision deaths, but the effects of the 
electromagnetic frequencies coming from the cell phone towers. It's all cited here in this letter. And our government knows, our government knows how dangerous the radiation coming from the cell phone towers and Gwen towers are for all of us, but also migratory birds. And those effects clearly will only increase because there has been an explosive growth of handheld technologies. Cell phones, every time you use a cell phone, This is how, you know, I try to explain that we are all culpable in this mess. Every time you use a cell phone, you're affecting life itself. Recent studies from Europe raised troubling concerns about the effects of radiation from cellular communication antennas, especially on residents breeding migratory on resident not residents like the two-legged, resident breeding migratory birds. The apparent effects, feather, deformities, weight loss, weakness, reduced survivorship and death, especially to birds and their offspring nesting adjacent to cellular antennas. But no effects to those birds were detected prior to construction and operation of these cellular communication antennas. Studies in the US found that the even extremely low levels of radiation had a fatal effect on chicken embryos. The white stork nests within 200 meters of antennas compared to nests located more than 300 meters from antennas. Those that were within 200 meters, 40% of the nests had no eggs, no chicks, while only 3.3% of nests that were within 300 meters or further from 300 meters, I'm sorry. Only 3% had no chicks. White stork couples that were near the antennas frequently fought for sticks. Their sticks fell to the ground while they tried to build nests. The nest did not get built and their chicks frequently died. It caused aggression in white storks. Birds, bees, magnetically sensitive to cryptochromes. How important are cryptochromes to navigate and also to control their immune system? Birds and bees use magnetically sensitive substances called cryptochromes. Cryptochromes measure light to control and reset animals and plants' biological clocks. So when that is interfered with, with this Wi-Fi world we live in, it has a very damaging effect. It can disrupt insects and animals' solar and magnetic navigational abilities. It can account for colony collapse disorder in bees, the loss of some migratory birds and butterflies, and immune system weakening. Robins can navigate in the Earth's magnetic field if they receive light from wavelengths absorbed by cryptochrome. Exposure to man-made frequencies made the birds completely unable to respond to the Earth's field. Wi-Fi cordless landline phones blot out magnetic vision. So even lower field strengths are likely to disturb magnetic navigation since radiation that is too weak to blot out magnetic vision totally, may still be strong enough to disturb, distort a bird's perception of the Earth's field, causing the bird or insect to fly in the wrong direction. 
and sheer number of wireless devices gives birds continuously conflicting navigational data as if they're bombarded by flashing disco lights. Yeah. Every time that you are outside, you're using that cell phone, you're texting, you're receiving calls, it doesn't matter. We're all a part of screwing up the natural processes of other species. So, circadian metabolic rhythms, very, very important, even our own circadian metabolic rhythms in humans. It keeps us in sync with Earth's 24-hour rotation on its axis, driven by cryptochrome containing internal clocks. We can anticipate the coming of dawn and dusk. Animals can. Circadian rhythms control the production of melatonin. They divert metabolic resources to repair an immune and immune system strengthening. So losing or even weakening of the circadian rhythm has serious consequences. In humans, tiredness during the day, poor sleep at night, reduced production of melatonin. And, well, we all know that those effects are reported in many, many people. And the immune system may never be able to summon the massive power that is sometimes required to overcome pathogens destroy cancer cells. People living near cellular antennas, it has been noted that clusters, cancer clusters, leukemia clusters are found in neighborhoods where there's a lot of cell phone towers. So this biophysicist retired from the Los Angeles or Los Alamos National Lab. He said biology is very sophisticated in its ability to use to make use of electromagnetic fields. Cryptochromes are just one example. Despite centuries of discoveries in biology and advances in medicine, there is so much we don't know. For example, why do our brains, sinuses, and other tissues have magnetic mag magnet type particles? Bones and collagen are piezoelectric. In an electric field, they expand and contract. What are the implications of that? And what about recent experiments that show that DNA is a semiconductor and that melanin, including neuromelanin in the brain, is a conductor? So if it's a conductor, it is pulling the frequencies right to it. The frequencies that we're saturated in now. Every time you use a cell phone, you're pulling frequencies right into your brain. Think about that. When you go to text or call someone, or you receive a call, and that cell phone is only inches away from your brain, or you know, just a foot away from your face as you're dialing the number, the frequencies are far more intense. You you literally pull them right into your brain. They're piezoelectric. What are the implications of that? Well, that I'll discuss in my next video because the implica implications are so incredibly profound. But if you've seen mine or somebody else's video on smart dust, these nano-sized sensors, that they're dropping all over to create the Internet of Things. So tiny, you can breathe them right in. They cross the blood-brain barrier. And is it a coincidence that these sensors, these nano-generators, these nano-sized smart dust are piezoelectric? So we're breathing in conductors for these frequencies. And yeah, the implications are really very profound, very serious, very dangerous. All links are below.